Hey Guardians, Jaywalking here, welcome back. In this video, we're going to show and discuss how to solo the Hollow Layer Nightfall on Warlock. Timestamps are in the video description, but first, if you don't have the pinnacle weapons I suggest for your weapons loadout, never fear. Click the link in the upper right portion of the screen to check out my video of a solo Hollow Layer run using only blue weapons pulled from collections. If you are interested in a particular encounter in this Nightfall, use the timestamps on screen or in the video description to skip ahead. If you should find this video useful, please drop a like and subscribe. Remember to click the bell for more content. Also, come check me out on Twitch and follow me on Twitter for more jaywalking shenanigans. Maybe you like solo challenges, or maybe you don't have a team to play with, sad face. But either way, you're likely playing this Nightfall to get your hands on the Mindbender's Ambition Shotgun, which is still one of the best shotguns in the game, even at the making of this video in Season of Arrivals. The role shown on screen is the curated role, which is viable again thanks to Opening Shot. A god tier perk on shotguns now that shotgun range has been nerfed in Sandbox 2.8.0. I also have a quick draw snapshot roll which took upwards of 100 runs to get. Today we're going to be using Bottom Tree Voidwalker, a Tomb of Hunger. I value survivability when doing solo PvE runs and this subclass was built for it. The key feature of course is Devour, which you can proc multiple ways. Eating your grenade, getting a charged melee kill, or getting a kill with Noble Bomb. This will restore your health and start a 10 second timer. Any kills you get while this timer is active will restore your health and restart the timer. So you can keep it up indefinitely as long as you're getting kills. We're going to pair this with Nezrek Sin, an exotic helmet that restores ability energy on any void kill. This will synergize with the Recluse or any void based weapon, allowing us to have our abilities up more often than not, which will also allow us to have Devour up more often than not. For weapons, we'll be using two Pinnacle Crucible weapons, the Mountaintop Grenade Launcher and the Recluse SMG. For Heavy, we'll be using the Interference 6 Grenade Launcher, which you can get as a World Drop, or from Legendary Engrams, with Full Court, which increases detonation damage the farther the grenade travels before impact, Clown Cartridge for an overflowed mag on reload, Spike Grenades, Quick Launch, and a Velocity Masterwork and Backup Mag. Yeah, this is the god roll, boys and girls. Other full court spike grenade launchers include Love and Death, obtainable from the Lectern of Enchantment on the moon. Doomsday, obtainable from Tier 3 Reckoning when the likeness of Oryx is the boss. And Swarm of the Raven, which can roll with spike grenades, but not full court. It's a good choice, especially since it's void based. It can be obtained from Iron Banner. I'm running all the grenade launcher perks on my armor, but run perks that will help you based on whatever weapons you may be using. I'm using Grenade Launcher Ammo Finder, Enhanced Grenade Launcher Loader, Double Reserves, Scavenger, and Dire Artillery for extra super energy on Grenade Launcher kills. Let's get into it. Typically, I would hop directly onto my Sparrow and head into the Strike, but as you can see, what you spawn into is a bit based on RNG or is random. I decided to stay and kill these Scorn Pikesters because they could have easily destroyed my Sparrow and me along with it. This is a good reminder to be flexible, be adaptable, be patient, and you'll be just fine. Now we hop on our Sparrow and zoom around to the entrance, but be careful because, as you can see, it's fairly easy for the baddies to annihilate you because, let's face it, your Sparrow is squishy as f***. Now, you can fight your way through this next section to collect super energy and ammo drops, but for the sake of time, I'm showing you how I speedrun this section to get to the Scorn Walker Arena. You'll see me sliding around a lot in this video, and while knee sliding is a great way to stay in shape and look cool in front of your friends, it also shrinks your hitbox, temporarily removes you from radar, and makes you harder to hit by those pesky Scorn enemies. Run, slide, skip, juke, and bunny hop your way along until you get to the Quitter's Well Arena. Eat a grenade if you like, then get busy. I like to start with these two Scorn on the right, and work my way around toward the left. These Scorn Chieftains will be a pain in the ass through this strike, and it's a good idea to take them out as quickly as possible. Finish the remaining baddies, and two Scorn Snipers will spawn on either side of the arena. Dispatch them as you see fit, then hop onto the counterweight.
eat a grenade to proc devour, then start toward the spawning enemies with the intention of killing the solar shielded chieftain on the right, before retreating to the alcove on the left side of the arena, which will become your new home away from home for the duration of this encounter. Kill the scorn that spawn in front of you, and then it's up to you whether to clear the enemies on the platform to the right. If you lose track of yourself, they can flank you, but if you pay attention to your movement and positioning, they don't pose much of a threat. Start DPSing the legs of the walker, and then listen for this sound. This is your signal that the walker is about to spew a sh ton of rockets at you, so make sure you take cover whenever you hear this sound. Continue chopping away at its legs or the rocket assembly on top of its back to get it to drop. There's that sound again. The walker now drops, erecting a shield dome around it and exposing its weak spot, the orange glowing section around its neck. Drop a Nova Bomb on it, DPS, kill some adds, then retreat to your home away from home, get ready to rinse and repeat. Ah, but one thing you should know. When the walker recovers, it emits a pulse wave that knocks it back, and you can totally blow yourself up on the shield as I did here. So, uh, be careful, huh? Two waves of Scorn Ravagers will spawn and rush you. Drop a Healing Rift, proc Devour if you have it available, then go ham on the remaining Ravagers. Whiff a few melees like any good Warlock would, and then finish them off. Remember what I said about paying attention? Yeah, I wasn't. But hey, it's not a nightfall without an oh sh moment, right? Continue as you've been until you finish the walker. Once the walker is dropped, wait a moment for a new objective to show on your screen, or sometimes the strike will lag out and not properly load the next checkpoint. A mindless executioner. Fight your way through the next room, taking care to quickly dispatch the two scorned dudes wielding torches, as they can quickly turn your killing spree into a very bad day. Still with me? Good. The trick to getting through this next encounter is to manage how and when the next wave of enemies will spawn. Eat a grenade, then get busy. First you'll encounter a room full of pissed off scorn, an arc shielded chieftain on the left, a solar shielded chieftain on the right, trash mobs, and a couple of scorn snipers. Use cover to your advantage and be patient, because if you decide to YOLO, you can get dead real quick. I like to take out the left chieftain and the sniper behind him first, then focus down on the right chieftain before cleaning up the rest of the adds. This, this is an ether torch. Kill it fast. Arc chieftains will summon ether binds or tethers, and void chieftains will spawn ether shields. It's important to destroy any of those ASAP. Ah! 
Oh yeah, check this out. Do it. Whiff. Whiff. This was the start of several bad luck plays in this encounter, but I decided to leave them in to show that it's important to be patient, stay determined, and rally back from unlucky plays in any encounter. However, you should know that it took me longer to complete this encounter because of some of my bad plays. Okay, while this is a panic rift, this is going to be a strategic position for completing the encounter, so get rid of the explosive barrel next to it when you have the chance. Finish the ads, collect any ammo or orbs of light there may be in the room, then hop on the counterweight that was to your left when you entered the arena. Eat a grenade, then get to work clearing the ads that spawn. Jump off the plate about halfway down to clean them up, because if you stay on the plate until it finishes, it will spawn a second wave of ads complete with two chieftains, so your survivability goes down as a result. Once the first wave is dealt with, get back on the plate and ride it all the way down. Eat another grenade to proc devour, then drop a nova bomb on this spot right here, which should kill the two chieftains that spawn. Sometimes they survive and get away, so be prepared to finish them if they do. Clear the rest of the ads, collect any ammo and orbs, then jump on the next counterweight. Eat a grenade, clear ads. Pro tip, when scorn spawn, you'll first notice a glow of light. Don't shoot yet. Wait until you see the shafts of light appear inside the glow. Then you can safely spawn kill them without wasting ammo by firing too early. Like the other plate, hop off before it reaches bottom so that you can clear this first wave of ads and recover any ammo and orbs that drop. Once that's done, get back on the plate, ride it to the bottom, and prepare to face the vengeful hand. Disclaimer. Speedrunners show a way to run through the shield to bypass this fight, but in order to get the final boss to spawn, the Fanatic, you have to kill the Vengeful Hand. In my experience, it's really difficult to run through the shield and kill the Vengeful Hand before he saunters through the shield itself, as he's programmed to do, effectively cutting you off from finishing the fight or advancing the checkpoint. I mean, a Nova Bomb and a full magazine of Grenade Launcher wasn't enough to do it, so I'm going to show you how to clear the fight instead. 
Get the attention of the spawning adds, retreat to the strategic position we talked about, drop a rift, then kill the first incoming ad with a charged melee to proc devour. Go ham on the remaining ads. Take a little time to make sure the boss is coming at you through the center of the room. This is important because completing this encounter successfully relies on your ability to manage his positioning. Work your way counterclockwise around the room, clear remaining adds, then DPS the boss until the next wave of adds spawn. Get back in rift position, rinse repeat. But be aware that an arc shielded chieftain has spawned. Take him out ASAP. Through all of this chaos, I'm keeping a close eye on my radar and I see the boss is closing on me fast. So I'm really focused on finishing these ads and getting to the other side of the room. He's getting a little too close for comfort at this point, so I rotate around before continuing DPS. Nope. DPS him until the final wave of ads spawn in, drop a rift, proc devour, go ham. Avoided shielded chieftain has spawned, finish him quickly. Rotate and finish the boss. Finally, good job. <laughs> Gather ammo, etc., then speedrun this next section to the Fanatic. You can fight through this next section, but for the sake of time, yeah. It can be tricky maneuvering these moving platforms. I prefer Strafe Glide for this. But aim for the middle and you should be fine. Don't be rushed, but do be quick as you will be taking fire the closer to the bridge you get. Eat a grenade if you need to restore your health, then rush the bridge. Sliding, juking, bunny hopping. Then rush past the Fanatic, vault up and over the two rails, and voila! 
You can proceed immediately to the Fanatic if you wish, but I prefer to proc Devour, then kill as many of these ads as I can in order to top off my super, ammo, and ability energy before proceeding with the final fight. Little shortcut you may be unaware of. Go to this first platform, spin around, jump straight up. Boom! You've now avoided the silly platforming of this ridiculous room. Here we go. Run through the circle to spawn the fight, hop up to the right, drop a Nova on the back. Oops, I missed again. Well, you want to DPS him until the first wave of ads spawn. DPS him enough and he'll retreat to safety, leaving only the ads to deal with. Take cover behind this pillar, drop a healing rift, and get busy. Proc Devour as soon as you can, clear the ads, keeping an eye on scorned snipers that have spawned. This side of the room, the left side of the room, sucks for cover because of all the moving machinery. So if you must venture this way, make it quick, in and out, before retreating to the relative safety of the right side of the room. If you haven't already, DPS the boss until he retreats. Take notice of the pools of arc energy he spawns around you, but don't worry about them too much. You can jump over them and out of them if needed. Take cover at the front of the room and prepare to clear ads. Eat a grenade, then mow them down as they rush you. The trick to this is to let most of them get close enough to you to bunch up, then you start jumping over all of them back and forth, raining death on them from above until they're all dead. Once they're dead, or there's only one or two left, the second wave will spawn. Same tactics, only a solar shielded chieftain will spawn towards the back. Jump up, jump over, and take him out as soon as possible. Finish the ads, gather ammo and orbs, then retreat to the right side of the room to face the fanatic. DPS him until he goes immune, at which point he will tether and transport you into the air. You want to break his shield before reaching him or he might stomp you into oblivion. 
break his shield, hit him once or twice with Mountaintop to spawn the next wave of adds, this time on the left. Meet them head on, eat a grenade, remember that cover sucks on this side of the map, and be nimble and quick. Take them out as quickly as possible, then retreat to the right side of the room, DPS the boss until he tethers you once again. Same deal. Break his shield, hit him once or twice to spawn the next wave of adds, this time on the right. Eat a grenade, kill adds, DPS him until he goes for safety. Take up your position at the front of the room, eat a grenade, and get busy. Wait, 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 what? That's not how it happened. What the fuck? Okay, take two. Where was I? Uh, oh yeah. What's different about these waves of ads is that instead of two, there are three. On the third wave, a Scorn Abomination will spawn. Get through the first two waves as usual. Then, when the third wave spawns, go to the right side of the room. This will funnel the adds into a sort of kill box for you, and also give you cover from the Abomination. Here comes the third wave. Drop a Nova Bomb to head off some of the adds, then kill the remaining adds that rush you through the homemade kill box. Gather some ammo and orbs, then carefully deal with the Abomination. Peak firing four mountaintop shots will do it. The Fanatic will emerge once again. Hit him once or twice to spawn the next wave of adds on the right. Proc Devour, kill, rinse, repeat. 
being mindful of the arc energy pools that are spawning on the floor. Once the other dead, DPS him until he goes immune and tethers you. These last couple of tethers can be dangerous because there will be adds in the room that can hurt you while you are hanging in the air. So drop his shield as quickly as possible with your heavy grenade launcher and keep firing on him until he tethers you again. Fire more heavy and finish him with a Nova Bomb. Congratulations! You've just soloed the Hollowed Layer Nightfall. May RNG smile upon you, but beware that sometimes you won't get any legendary gear out of the chest. While this can be deflating, keep at it, and you too can be the proud new owner of the Mindbender's Ambition Shotgun that will melt the face off any guardian silly enough to push you in the Crucible. Thanks for stopping by, and remember to drop a like or subscribe if you found this video useful. Eyes up, Guardian!